My dad always used to say to me, the man who stays calm under pressure will have no regrets, and he who doesn't may have many. Someone a bit more famous than my dad once said, getting angry is easy. Showing exactly the right amount of anger with the right person, at the right time and in the right way, that is not easy. Steve Peters in his book The Chimp Paradox describes the parts of the mind and how they work together and sometimes in conflict. The three different parts we have to be aware of and manage if we are to remain in control and achieve our objectives are our human, our chimp and our computer. Our chimp is the emotional brain. If you want to be in control you have to manage your chimp. It's the jungle brain. It's not good or bad. It's irrational, but it wants to keep us alive. It's five times more powerful than our human brain. It's five times more powerful than us. Its main drives are to eat, survive, and protect the ego. These are incredibly strong. It also has instincts, automatic behaviors initiated by a trigger. All it takes is a saber-toothed tiger, or for your tribe, to be outnumbered. Our human is us. It thinks logically, with fact and it wants to feel fulfilled. This is where conscious thought occurs and where we make our decisions. Our chimp and computer are so much more powerful than us, the human. It's pointless battling them with motivation or willpower. It's not going to work. They need managing correctly and programming. Our computer is where automatic behaviors, beliefs and values are stored. It's 20 times more powerful than us. So if there's conflict, it needs to be reprogrammed. When David Beckham was shown a red card against Argentina for tripping Diego, he'd lost control of his chimp. Would he be the same player if he hadn't have done that? Maybe, maybe not. But I'm sure if you'd have asked him after the game whether or not he regretted it, I'm sure he would have said yes. Years later, maybe he looks back and concludes it might have helped him. But the point is, if you have feelings, thoughts or behaviours that you don't want, then that's your chimp taking over. If your chimp makes a suggestion to trip somebody over who it feels threatened by and you the human are happy with that, then that's fine. There is no conflict. Go and trip as many people over as you can. The chimp is helpful in some cases and not in others. Ultimately, it's your human that needs to decide. Someone who is very good at controlling his chimp is Gary Lineker. Arguably, this has contributed to his success off the field too. There is some debate to whether or not he received a single yellow card in his career. Our living circumstances have changed so much in the past 50 to 60 years, not to mention the world's population has doubled. Effectively, we're still walking around with jungle mind management and not 21st century mind management. Just imagine a world where we all had our chimp brain under control. It doesn't take long on your journey to work to find somebody losing control of their chimp. Perhaps you witnessed somebody pulling out in front of somebody on the way to work. The person who was cut up figures it's rude, inconsiderate and an invasion of territory and a threat to survival. That's his chimp in action. Chimps jump to conclusions and they make suggestions to us with emotions on how to act. If you manage to stay calm, that's your human putting things into perspective. It tries to think logically and gather truth before making judgments. You will probably conclude that this person was very tired like all of us are. He didn't see you, and if he could speak to you, he'd probably say sorry. You put it into perspective and realise that it isn't life-threatening, and it really doesn't matter in the long run. The thing is, your chimp is five times more powerful than your human brain. It has to be so that we can survive in real danger. So you have to manage it correctly, and it's not easy. The chimp makes judgments and then looks for information to support it afterwards. One Sunday evening, my son was playing football with his brother. He kicked the ball and it flew straight towards the table where we were sitting. It hit an empty glass. The glass shot off the table and hit the floor. Now how you respond to this situation depends heavily on how your human and chimp and computer work together. I looked around and thought, is everybody okay? The answer was yes, so that gave me more time to make a decision. How do I want to respond? I could have shouted at the top of my voice and thrown a tantrum. I even made my son cry and feel embarrassed, but I didn't. The chimp would have said, he did it on purpose, he needs to be punished. But I didn't believe that, my human decided to look for truth. I picked up the glass and gave the ball back to my son. And as I did, he said sorry. I said, don't worry son, I'm raising kids, not glasses. 
We all make mistakes, I'm sure you won't do it again. What did my computer have to believe to respond this way? The most important thing is that everybody is okay. With my own reactions, I'm teaching my kids how to respond. And we all make mistakes and it's possible to stay calm and forgive. You see, I can only influence my son when mine and his chimp are not activated. I can't influence him if his chimp feels threatened and his body is full of emotions. He's either going to defend or attack when his emotions are high, meaning he will not hear any message of mine. What did this teach him? It taught him that staying calm is an option. It said, I care more about him than a glass. That it's okay to make a mistake. I'm sure if I gave him 100 more shots at the glass, he couldn't hit it. It was purely accidental. What most people watching would have thought though was, I can't believe he's let his son get away with that. Isn't he going to be punished? You see, that's their chimp in action. Making a judgement without first seeking the truth. If your chimp regularly gets out of control, here's how to manage it. If your chimp is out of control and you're okay with that, then there is no problem. The first step is to exercise the chimp. Realise that what your chimp is saying is not a command. It's a suggestion. Allow it to make suggestions, but don't make a judgement. The second step is to box it. Try and reason with your chimp. Suggest truths and facts. The third stage is to feed it bananas. Not so powerful, but useful in some instances. Let's say for instance that there is a lovely chocolate cake on offer, and your chimp thinks you should eat it. But you know as the human that you are trying to manage your weight, and your decision would be to eat something more healthy. You could feed your chimp a banana and say, If I manage not to eat chocolate cake for the next five days, then I can treat myself to a guilt-free Sunday dinner. Another way to calm your chimp is to control what you can control and to forget about what you can't. Sounds obvious, I know. You can't control others. You can influence circumstances to an extent, but you can't control them fully. You can generally control yourself and your reactions to events. It's not what happens to you, it's how you react to what happens to you. Particularly in sports, it's important to focus on your own performance. It's very easy to look at what others are doing and to start worrying about how good they are. For my son, it's very easy to worry about what others are doing and how well they are doing. But by doing this, you lose control of your own performance. It's very easy for my students when approaching a tournament to worry about what they can't control. The weather, other people's performances, what people think of them. What if they mess up? What if they make a mistake? This draws the focus away from them and often makes them anxious. If you can learn to focus on yourself and your own reactions to what happens to you, then it will calm your inner chimp and enhance your performance. It's somewhat enlightening when you identify what you can control. This may sound nonsense on first glance, but you have to give up control to gain control. I remember my first session with a sports psychologist. He managed to get me focused on looking at what I can control, my preparation, my attitude, my attitude towards a bad shot or mistake, my pre-shot routine. Ultimately, after that, you have to accept you've done all you can and then swing the golf club freely. And number two, he altered my expectations. He got me to expect nothing. I didn't expect to score well when I was hitting the ball well, nor did I expect to score badly when I was hitting the ball badly. I didn't expect anything. You might say, how on earth can changing what you expect affect your performance? Changing what I focused on and what I expected had a dramatic effect on my performance. I shot my personal best at the time of two under par, shaving five shots from the previous one. My beliefs had allowed me to perform freely and ultimately gain more control. It was here where I began to realise the power of mindset on performance. Changing how you see yourself and others and the world is incredibly powerful. It's easy for my son who plays golf to look how well others are doing and if their score is lower. It's easy for him to say, I'd like to be as good as them. But he must start from where he is now and take small steps to improve his own score. He can't control how other people perform. Our youngsters often become obsessed with scoring and winning and sometimes it's our fault. We put too much emphasis on being the best without even realising it. Take for instance the Facebook syndrome. Your child wins a medal. You say, wow look at that medal. That's fantastic. You're so talented. Just wait till I tell everybody about that medal. Let me take a picture so I can put it on Facebook and then everybody else will be so proud of you too. 
Well, what's wrong with that, you might say? On closer inspection, the indirect message is, I'm proud of you because you have achieved. The child's worth is dependent on the medal. And I want the world to know, so I put it on Facebook. The child then concludes that what everybody else thinks of them is dependent on the medal too. The indirect message is, achievement is why everybody else will think good of you. Well, why the hell can't I be proud of my kid and put a picture on Facebook? Of course you can, but let's take a look at a better way. Your child runs up to you with a medal. You say, hang on, give me a hug. I'm so proud of you for your effort today. I'm so proud of you. You work so hard and put so much effort into practice. Now, what's that nice looking medal you have? It's lovely. People might like to see how pretty it is. Should we put a picture on Facebook? The indirect message here is, it's who you are and your attitude that people respect. Achievement is good, but it's not associated with your worth. And that's what I learned from The Chimp Paradox by Dr. Steve Peters.